Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the PvP Live Roundtable, bringing you in-depth discussions on all things gaming and esports. I'm Jeff West, one of the video producers here, and today I'm joined by... James Chen, League of Legends staff writer. Hey, I'm Nabil. I run Influencer Marketing and Partnerships. And John Culp. I'm editor, producer, and talent. So, big Overwatch bomb today, or not really a bomb, we, we knew it, uh, something was coming, but Orissa has been announced. She is now available on the PR, the 24th hero. PTR. The PTR, what did I say? PR. The PR. The <laughs> yeah. production report. Uh, we're going to talk about kind of our thoughts on everything that was announced today. So, first and foremost, uh, because it's what uh, Lord Kaplan started off with, let's talk about how she fits into the lore. I enjoy where they've placed her in the story because she's a fresh take. Ify is a new character overall. They don't have any connections to like Anna or Sombra or anyone like that. They're their own independent story, so it's a new branch in the Overwatch world. Hmm, fair. And looking at Orisa's kit, James, is there anything uh, right off the bat that is just outright broken that needs to be patched right away because they fucked her up out of the gate? Well, I'm not sure if it actually needs a day one patch, but if you all haven't noticed, she basically has Zarya's ult on a low cooldown right click. As in, she's able to drive the enemy team to a single location and have her team blow them up, do a whole bunch of damage, all that shit. And it's actually pretty fucking amazing to have an ult on, on something like that. Now, it's not nearly as powerful though. It doesn't last nearly as long. It takes a while to set up. It travels pretty slowly and then, and then it has to actually land before it drags everybody in. But overall, having that on a choke point is already nasty enough when you're playing Zarya. To have it every few seconds is pretty bomb. Okay. Uh, Nabil, is there a... Uh... <laughs> that was not a good segue. <laughs> Excellent. So she's really good at moving people around. Nabil, what, what, what are Orisa's abilities when it comes to just blowing shit up and being the tank character that she is? So the initial impression that I saw was she kind of has this Gatling gun kind of effect closer towards Bastion where she's just unloading clips into people. Um, and she also has kind of this slow-moving ball that comes out full of energy, almost closer to Symmetra. Um, so the damage that I saw seems pretty decent. Um, I think when I look at a character like this, she's a bit of a jack-of-all-trades, but kind of a king of none. So it's kind of interesting to see where she might sit in the meta and her oh, utility. Oh yeah, she's gonna break every meta that we have. <laughs> Orisa is a utility defensive tank yeah. through and through. She can break shit, but she can also buff shit. So like if they got a Bastion, she can throw that shit down. Like she can throw him off his core. She could throw a shield up mm -hmm. paired with other defense stuff. She can use her ult, which is basically just a team-based Ana ult, Nana boost thing. So yeah, well, is she she's not going to define a new meta. She's going to break the metas that already exist. Yeah, I, I think you're right about that because she really is someone that's like, all about alley-oops, right? She's all about setting up, throwing that perfect lob. I, I think that it's so sick, like exactly what you're talking about of, well, my team needs something, let me just whip something out from my toolbox. When it comes to what she can do, it feels like she really has a touch of everyone and then they all incorporated her in there. She gonna initiate team fights without ever getting into a team fight. Yeah. Given the fact that she kind of has a little bit of everything, are there any flaws in Orisa? Or uh, uh, what hero or heroes is, are, are, are gonna be the biggest challenge for her, I guess is a better question. She does seem to be very much a mid-range hero in that anything shorter than that, anything that can get up to her face is going to cause her a lot of problems. Uh, Tracer and Winston, for example, can get the drop on Orisa and she won't have an escape. And not only that, but they will have means to be able to dodge out of her abilities as well. There is the delay in the casting of her, of her uh, primary abilities. The shield and the uh, Graviton Surge uh, duplicate has a, set, has a very long setup time and activation time before they actually kick in. Which means that if you're playing a fast hero, they'll be able to juke out of it and land right on top of her where she's not going to be, going to be able to do anything but like left click on you. She possibly can be assassinated with somebody that can jump on her. Although I think that Reaper might uniquely be a flanker that might actually have trouble against her. Yeah, I survived his death blossom twice and then I laughed at him as I killed him. <laughs> <laughs> She's the answer to death. Just cure cancer. Yep. Just turn into a robot. Fix all your problems. That's a bingo. So John, you're kind of the, the, the resident Overwatch fanatical expert, if you will, of the office. Um, what do you think? Are there any heroes that are going to be a, a tough challenge for Orisa? Or, or is she literally just uh, the greatest thing to ever happen to the game? 
I mean, with every single change, people say that it's the greatest thing to ever happen to the game. Mm-hmm. Going back to Sombra, people yeah, thought... Yeah, so- Sombra was like, oh my god, she's so broken. She's, she's going to be OP, thing. and now... Every single thread you see about her is please buff Sombra because she's so weak. She's like, one of the least picked champions. Oh, sorry, heroes. Trigger. It's a different game, bro. <laughs> it's a different game. <laughs> I think that she, for right out the gate, is extremely well balanced. There's going to be a lot of people complaining about her spread, her clip size, and her halt, the graviton surge. Like James was saying, she doesn't have a viable escape. You pull whoever's trying to flank you out of the way, and then you haul ass at two miles an hour the other way. And like I said, like I took an entire Death Blossom to the face and it did not kill me. Mm. So she can survive most things. Kick ass. Well, uh, let's wrap things up by kind of focusing on the thing that any red carpet award show focuses on and puts importance on. Thoughts on Orissa's overall look? I mean, personally, I feel like she's got the head of the alien from Species and from the neck down, she looks like a bug from Starship Troopers. But, you know, that's just me. She actually reminds me a lot of Manoroth from World of Warcraft, the demon centaur with the tusks. But she does actually have a demon skin. So that's definitely something for Halloween next time. Didn't really blow me away, but at the same time, the more I see the her, her abilities and her traits, it's like, okay, that matches. And some of the skins look interesting. I, I don't know. I'm just not sold on it yet. But no, uh, then again... And real quick, let me ask you this. Do you think that the reason you're not quite impressed with Orisa is because she's not the character that we all knew was going to be announced? I definitely think that's part of it. Because um, I, I, I kind of been seeing nothing but Doomfist, Doomfist, Doomfist. And I kind of had this uh, imagination of Terry Crews just busting through a door with this crazy, like, super metal, super powered suit. And then I kind of get this goat... Mecha thing. <laughs> it's, it's so. I, I just. I mean, Lucio, super badass. Farah, super badass. Mercy, like, did some of those skins. Well, they're supposed to because they're offensive heroes, you know? Yeah. She, she's a defense unit. She comes from an OR 15, which is used to defend Nabani, you know? And actually, going back to that, I'm surprised that they made her look as good as she does. I didn't really care for the designs of those robots and I was like I really hope it doesn't have a lot of similarities to this but yeah I like it I like her uh, her di- dynasty skin I don't know what it's called but I call it dynasty I mean the word is dynasty John I know but I say dynasty because oh, okay. she nasty on F Hill. by the way just as a like a mind blower conclusion to this Orissa is actually OR15A oh you're right like That's alpha cool. yeah yeah that's pretty cool yeah Whoa. She's also the first uh, robot in Overwatch that has a confirmed sexuality. Yeah, the Bastion There, thing. you got your female robot. Are you happy? Yeah, not really. <laughs> but uh, but at the same Does time... She voice? Yeah, I, she, I literally uh, haven't gotten to the voice. She, there's like one line that's in there. I don't think we've had... We haven't had a robot that's like anything outside of beep boops. So I yeah. want to hear like what she sounds like saying it's, words. It seems like if he tried to make her more uh, sentient mm-hmm. than other Omnics true, have true. been portrayed. Because, you know, Zenyatta is pretty Zenyatta. sentient. Right. I, I only thought about Bastion. I was convinced, like, Zenyatta is, like, some dude that just, like, slapped on a bunch of this, like, Tony Stark armor thing. And is like, all right, I'm a peaceful dude, but I throw these balls real hard. <laughs> I bought the war. And on that note, uh, <laughs> that's going to wrap us up for this week's edition of the PvP Live Roundtable. Let us know in the comments uh, your thoughts about Orissa, and uh, we'll Thank see you guys you. next week.